let's take another look related to orthogonality that we can now um, talk about orthogonal sets of vectors since we know what it means for two vectors to be orthogonal to each other. We say that a set of vectors, so if I have some kind of collection of vectors, u1, u2, all the way up to ur, and each one of those is some element in Rn, we say that this whole set is an orthogonal set, so this is a new term. We previously defined what it means for two vectors to be orthogonal to each other. Now we're defining this new term called an orthogonal set. If every single vector in the set is orthogonal to every other vector in the set. So ui dot uj is zero for all i's and j's, obviously, except for when i and j are equal to each other. So I have an orthogonal set of vectors. If any two vectors I grab out of here, I compute their dot product, I get zero. So just in other words, all vectors in the set are orthogonal to each other. So that's all we mean by an orthogonal set of vectors. Let's do a little example. Let's take a look at this set of vectors, 1, 1, 0, 2, negative 2, 0, and negative 3, 1, 2. So that's the set of vectors we'll work with. And the question, not surprisingly, is, is this an orthogonal set of vectors? Is it an orthogonal set, yes or no? So one easy way to do that based on this definition is just start computing the dot products between each vector in the set. So let's go ahead and check the first pair. Let's do u1 dot u2. So I'm gonna kind of multiply these across here for my dot product computation. I'm gonna get one times two plus one times a negative two plus zero times zero, and that equals two minus two plus zero, which is indeed zero. So I've kind of passed the first check. These two vectors are orthogonal to each other. What about u1 dot u3? Well, again, I'm gonna multiply out each coordinate. That's just the definition of the dot product. So one times a negative three plus one times one plus zero times two, and I get a negative three plus one plus zero equals not zero, right? A negative three plus one is a negative two. I get a number that's not zero. So vectors u1 and u3 are not orthogonal to each other. So that breaks my definition of an orthogonal set. This is not an orthogonal set. So the answer to this question is no. Let's go ahead and look at an example now where we do indeed have an orthogonal set. So slightly different set of vectors, one, four, one, two, zero, negative two, and two, negative one, two. So that's my set of vectors. Again, same question. Is this an orthogonal signal set? Is this an orthogonal set of vectors? And let's just go pairwise and compute all the possible dot products. So let's do u1 dot u2. So that's two plus four times zero is four times zero is zero. And then one times a negative two is minus two. So I'm going a little faster here. I'm not writing down all the details, but dot products at this point are pretty easy. We've been doing it for quite a few videos in a row. So this gets zero, so that's good. U1 dot U3, I get two. Four times a negative one is four. One times two is two, and I get zero again. Two plus two is four, minus four is zero. So U1 and U3 are orthogonal to each other. And then the last thing I need to check is U2, U3. So I get two times two is four. Zero times a negative one is zero. Two times, a negative two times two is a negative four and I get zero. So every pair that I've selected is orthogonal to each other. So this is an orthogonal signal set. That's all we have to do is check each pair of vectors. They're all orthogonal. So we call this an orthogonal set of vectors. All right, so here's another kind of nice fact that'll be kind of useful going forward. If we have an orthogonal set of vectors, it turns out that that orthogonal set is a basis for the subspace spanned by the set. Remember, a basis is a set of vectors, kind of the smallest set of vectors that we can write things as a linear combination. So if I have an orthogonal set of vectors, that right off the bat is a basis. So in this example uh, that we worked with, we had three vectors. These were all elements of R3. I ended up with three vectors that are indeed orthogonal to each other. So it turns out that this set of three vectors is an orthogonal basis for R3. So I now have a basis for R3. So just kind of a nice fact and why we like orthogonal signal sets, because once you have an orthogonal signal set, 
or orthogonal set of vectors, basically you have a basis right away. Sometimes you notice I use the word orthogonal signal set. A lot of the work I do is in the area of digital communications and signal processing, where we're often representing signals as vectors. So you'll often see that notation as well. But in the linear algebra context, we often just call it an orthogonal set of vectors. So anyway, back to our nice fact, you know, once you have an orthogonal set, we now have this orthogonal basis, and that's a very handy thing. And we'll look at that some more in the next videos.